So we will do a very short introduction into integ integration. It does, this doesn't mean that integration is not important or that it's somehow less important than ordinary differential equations. It's just that we didn't have time to go into a lot of details. But at this point, you should be able to pick up a textbook and learn on your own. Um, again, there's always time constraints. There's a lot of very cool topics that we could have done, but there's only one semester. So again, don't take it as I personally prefer ordinary differential equations because I also teach transport phenomena, and those typically come in form of differential equations. And my, my research in general uh, revolves more around uh, differential equations and how they uh, how they describe phenomena around us. So in that sense, I prioritize all the ease over <laughs> integration. But again, integration is still nevertheless a very important topic. So let's see where it shows up. Uh, this is just suggested reading uh, in your textbook. Uh, there's chapter 19, uh, just the formulas with some background, and then some advanced topics uh, that are also in chapter 20. And as usual, we have different types of problems. Okay? I can have function in form of data. And well log is an example where most of whatever it is that you're logging comes as a function of that, but it's really a data points against that. It's not something that has a formula that you can easily manipulate mathematically. Okay? You can if you do some fitting. So you could interpolate that data or you could curve fit that data to actually get a functional form. So that is one way out of the situation. Or you could simply treat it as data. Okay. So for instance, once you actually have that, you could be wondering what is the area under that curve. So for instance, if we remember the capillary pressure data that I had against saturation, integral under that curve is actually energy required to be put into the system to do the displacement, and that's obviously something of practical uh, value. Uh, so essentially, you might want to do that. It can also simply be an area, and we'll have that example. So either way, there are certain problems where I would like to do an integral uh, of a function or my data to get this area under the curve represented with it. <coughs> so in that case, as usual, we're going to most, most often, we're going to actually divide my area into sub-areas, and I'm going to approximate this area on each sub-area. And if my formula is working well, okay, then as I'm getting smaller in terms of these sub-areas, my results should improve and get closer to the actual integral. Now, here are some example. So this is, for instance, a cross-sectional area of a river. This is river bed. Okay. And these days, there's a lot of different tools that you can use. There's LiDAR. There is all kinds of measurements that can actually give you this profile. So this profile that is shown here is actually digital terrain model based on the measurements. So you could also look at the mass of an object. It's a volume integral of local density. Okay. Uh, and any kind of area typically when you have a transfer of momentum, of energy, of mass, it's going to happen over a certain area. And you might need to integrate that area to get the total transfer that is happening. So what we defined as flux in some of the problems, it's typically per area. So to get the total flux of anything, you have to integrate that over the area of interest to actually get the total volumetric flux going through. So often, you actually have to integrate to, to get that happen. Here, there is also, so here, if you look at this river and cross section, so basically, you will get the volume of the river, or even just on this cross section, as integrating depth function. Okay? That could be, by the same token, volume of my reservoir. Okay? So I will typically have delineations of my reservoir and subsurface in, to find its volume I need to integrate. Now, as I said, I could, if I just had data, I could first curve fit my data to get a function. 
So I could then analytically integrate that function. Okay. And for a lot of co either complicated function or tabulated data, we can actually just then use the data directly. And that will give me trapezoidal formula. That is the only formula that we're going to introduce today. You could also try to fit your data points with the smoother functions in between and uh, basically do polynomials in between. And polynomials are easy to integrate because I have formulas to do so. And that gives us some more accurate formula called Simpson's rules. Now there is, if I actually know which function I'm integrating, then there is more advanced formulas or so-called Gauss quadrature. Now this is just for your information. We will really work with the trapezoidal <coughs> formula all. As an introduction, yes. I'm just wondering, will this going to turn into some sort of like a Riemann sum sort of thing? Yes, some sort of, yes, sum. Uh, integration is summation. Okay. So here's one example. The most common thing, of course, the simplest thing that I could do is, okay, well, I have a complicated function. It's here in blue. The simplest thing that I could do is draw a line. Okay, simplest model ever is a line. Simpl <laughs> simplification of everything is a line. So if I do that, then I'm approximating this entire area, okay, with the area of this trapezoid. Hence, we are going to get trapezoidal formula. Now, again, this is a pretty wide interval. If I actually divide it in two, okay, then I'm actually going to approximate this as, with the, even if I approximate with a line here and a line here, I'm going to get closer. So my difference between the actual area under the curve and difference between this straight line is going to get smaller. What was done actually here is that I could fit something smoother to this formula, not necessarily just a line. I could fit a harder order, higher order polynomial through it and integrate that as well. So both are so-called Newton codes formulas. So the idea is, okay, I have a function on an interval. I either in the simplest way fit a, fit a line to those two points or a higher order polynomial, okay? And that's what I integrate because that's easier to integrate in terms of uh, analytics, okay? So here we fitted actually a parabola. Now, here is the simplest one, is actually just to do this straight line. So if I actually have A, this is my F of A, and this is B, this is F of B, okay? Then I, when I actually look at the area of this, okay, you will get that the area is this difference, B minus A, okay, times the average of these two values, okay? <coughs> And that's simply the formula for area of a trapezoid. So the simplest thing would be to just replace this integral from a to b f of x dx is approximated by this first order approximation to f. So this is this line that I fitted under this. And what is the line? The line is go, passes through two points, a f of a and b f of b. So if I have a line that is passing through two points, do I know how to write down a formula for that line? What is y is equal to? Slope is f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a times x minus a plus So when I have a line through two points, I'm going to write here quickly. A, F of A, B, F of B. So my Y of X is slope is F of B minus F of A divided by B minus A, correct? Times x minus a. Yes? And then plus f of. So 
plug in B here. B minus A, B minus A will go. I have F of B minus F of A. I need to get F of B as a result. F of A. Yes? Does this check out? For as X is equal to A, my this is 0. This is F of A. Yes? For X is equal to B, This is f of b minus f of a plus f of a, so it's f of b. Or ask Google <laughs> for the formula, OK? But you can, this is a formula of a line through two oh, okay. points. Okay. Now, you might have seen that with x1, y1, x2, y2, right? And then you have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 times x minus x1 so plus y2. That's basically y is equal to mx plus b. So this is your slope, <laughs> and this is the where you cut the starting. Yeah. Initial y. Okay. Y one. Yeah. All right. So basically, I'm replacing integral integral of f with integral of this. Okay. So this is what I had it on the slides too, but I wanted to test you because on slides it was just given. So basically, when I integrate it, I know how to integrate it. There's an x missing here. Okay. Let me fix it right now. Uh, okay. So when you actually do that integral, When you do that integral, you will get actually this formula that your integral is b minus a, f of a plus f of b divided by a. So this is by, by 2. So this should be straightforward to integrate. This is a constant, and you know how to integrate a polynomial. Everybody OK with this? So that's basically how we had this area for integral of a trapezoid in the first place. Okay. So how can I get more accurate than this? I will do so by subdividing my interval into multiple subintervals and just applying the same formula on those subintervals. Okay. So basically, here, for instance, you could do two intervals, okay, and then you will replace this portion with the linear approximation and integrate and replace this portion with the linear approximation and integrate. Then you would get 3. And as you get more and more, you're going to actually get closer to the function itself. Okay. So as I increase my number of sub-intervals, and I will decrease this spacing here, and that's equal spacing. We're going to call it h again. Okay. I should get closer and closer to the actual function. And therefore, my integral should get better and better, even though I'm actually using a really simple formula. <coughs> so let's say that this I have between a and b, I have n intervals. Then this spacing is h is equal to b minus a divided by n. Okay, So this would be x0 would be my a, xn would be my b. And then I have altogether n minus 1 points in between to get. So I need to have altogether n plus 1 points for n intervals, right? So three points for two intervals, four points for three intervals, and so forth. Okay. So basically, this is my h. And then I'm going to basically go and integrate from x1. Maybe I started from x1. Maybe I started from x0. Same thing. From x1 to x2 of this approximation, linear approximation, x2 to x3, linear approximation, and so forth. Okay. And on all of these subintervals, these integrals are these integrals, OK? It's just that it's not a and b anymore, but it's this xi, xi plus 1 type of an interval. Yeah? 
Are we following? Approximately? Somewhat? Maybe. Okay. We'll have to do some MATLAB exercise to get this sink in. Oh, up there. Okay. So basically then, this trapezoidal rule was that B minus A, which is width of the interval, which is now H, okay, times average of the values at the interval ends. So this first one is just f of x1 plus f of x2 divided by 2. Then the second one is plus h times average of my next two points, so right here. Okay? And so forth, I go all the way to however many intervals I have. So when I sum up this, whoa, hi. When I sum this up, I'm actually going to get a formula. All of these f of x2, f of x2 repeats, f of x3 repeats. All of the points other than the end points repeat, so your sum really looks like this. So these are my end points, and these are all of the midpoints times h over 2. And if you type in what h is, h is b minus a divided by m, then you can replace h like here. But we know that the middle parts just repeat. Look. And if you, if you wrote in more terms here, you would always have this. Because this is the end point for this uh, interval and starting point for the next. Okay. And that's true only for all of these midpoints, but not for the end point. Okay, so if I turn that down. So that like covers the middle portion? Because shouldn't you have like f of x naught plus? Yeah, 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 so here, I started here, I did the formulas in MATLAB correction where you, when you start from 1, not from 0. So yes. So this, think about this as x1. And it's not x0 through xn, but it's x1 through xn plus 1. Okay? Doesn't this scream that you write a math lab program? Or it does. Open up your computers. I, I just scream. <laughs> you just scream? Pick a function. Give yourself a parabola. I don't care which one. Actually, let's let's have somebody suggest. Can you suggest me a parabolic function? <laughs> X squared. A little more complicated than that. Four x squared minus three x plus ten. Plus ten. There we go. This is your function that you need to integrate. And you will give me on which interval? Zero to four. Zero to four. All right. Your A is zero. B is four. Here we go. So I want you to write a program that integrates this f of x. And of course, you can also verify your solution analytically. You find an analytic integral to this. So you can see whether with increasing age, you're getting better and better. Yes? Yes, it's a sum. So the f of x i plus f of x x first plus one, it's all included in the sum, correct? Yeah. Just, so it's not like the sum of f of x i It's plus or yeah, so each of these, I have to, these are my values of f at all of these midpoints. So I have to evaluate them and sum them up. No. Okay. They're outside of it. They're all of these midpoints that are repeated twice. Oh, okay. Okay? Yes. Do step size? So you're going to pick step size. So how about this? There we go. I'm going to set it up. Um, good question.
So a new function. My inter output will actually be this integral, okay? And I'm gonna say trapezoidal formula, okay? And input arguments will be number of intervals, okay? And A and B, my endpoints. How's that? And the function that I'm gonna enter, I'm gonna write it down below. Function f x or y equals to f. I'm gonna call it f f so that I don't have. No, <coughs> f is fine. f of x. And and your y is equal to four times x square minus three times x plus ten. So you can just simply use this as a function f of x. And this is input. And n is number of subintervals. And a B is interval endpoints, as in where to integrate so my I will be integral over a B of parabolic function below. And I'm going to save it as a trapezoidal formula. Yes, if you have a sub, this sub function is visible only to this file. Okay? So that way I'm not mixing it up. I probably over the course of this So what is your H going to be, what you're spacing? but you can choose a b so this is a function that will work for different n a's and b's okay huh? um, might not have been and this is why it gave me issues with slides and I don't know why gonna do the same as
Let me just upload them. I'll be right with you. It is posted. So lecture slides are posted. This? So if we want to use the that function, do we just call Y? Oh, I see. I'm done. How about you? <laughs> I'm going to let you work a little.
So here's analytical solution. X is I anal. <laughs> I typed that in and I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> so, so, maybe not. Let me go on YouTube with that. Here's the error as well. So I'm just, I computed analytical integration. <laughs> I'm sure you really need to be very useful. <laughs> Again, I have 20 years of doing this over you, so. Yeah, and the point is that as you increase the number of intervals, well, I don't know if this is any good. I'm going to check now. Um, as far as I know, I might have some typos. So what I actually added here is not just, I did the integral if I did this correctly. So I have an analytical solution for polynomial as well, so I can check how well I'm doing. Okay. So let's give it a shot. I'm going to try to integrate here. And I'm going to say let's 10 intervals from 0 to 4. Oh, that's pretty good. OK, so I think. Now, what if I just had two intervals? OK, then my error is. 10%, not, not horrible. If I increase to 10, my, my error goes down. If I increase to 100, whoa. Okay. So I might need to actually switch to G here. And times 100, so I'm going to get percent. Uh, I think. I think. Well, let's see. Whoa, hi. Not enough input arguments. Oh, hi. Uh, in percent, and this is 100 times. So just to get a percentage. Doesn't like my percentages, I think. Right. So if I have hundreds of intervals, I'm getting pretty good. My error is 0.004%. Okay. Again, if I had only one interval, that would be 42% off. So if I get 2, 10%, 5, 
less than 2%, 10.4%. So did everybody get the this part? So my sum has that first. So first thing is to get the spacing and get the intervals or interval endpoints. They go from A to B, and the spacing is H. Okay. So these are my points X here. And then to get the formula, I have to have F of X1 and this last point. And all of the other ones, I have to create the sum and multiply it by 2. And then all of this, I multiply it by h over 2. So this is done here. I start my integral with f of x of 1. I add twice of all of the midpoints. I add that last point, And ultimately, I multiply it by h over 2. You add it twice? Yes, because that's the formula tells me that they're repeated, so there's two times. Oh, is it, is it okay if, we, if you, add you can points first and then you multiply by two? Of course. Okay. You can also immediately multiply by h over two. Fine by me. Okay. Your uh, your analytical solution. Um, the analytical interval is that just calculus. Okay, so that, oh, okay. So parabola, that's why I wanted the parabola. <laughs> I know how to integrate parabola. Okay? <laughs> Okay. Is that like this? This is my problem. So, this is the Yes. So, I just want to make sure this is correct. Right. So, what I'm doing basically is I'm saying that this is my I value. I minus 1 is looking at for I, so it's like minus 2. Yes. And that J just becomes 1. And then I is equal to 1, or I is equal to 2, you have to have that special case. So when your i is equal to 1, i minus 1 is a 0, and that's a 0. Right. But that's where, in that case, you're actually going to have here not, when i is equal to, two, uh, to 1, then you are have, going to have 2 here and 2 here. So you're just going to actually mirror this side. That's what those formulas are saying, that that's a way to treat the boundaries. So you could do it this way. So then you're going to have but this is going to be a problem because you don't have this. But that's what I'm saying is that formula, so that special case is this. So this formula is not going to be when I have this I is equal to 1. <laughs> then you're going to have T 2J, and there's some J here. Okay. So I is equal to 1J is anything. Then you're going to have T of 2J minus T of 1J plus T of 2J, if I'm now remembering correctly. Over delta X square, but you can T of, and this is just going to be i j plus 1 minus t of, so i is 1, 1 j and plus t of 1 j minus 1. Okay? Okay, that's a two dimensional Yes, it is. So basically, your coefficient <laughs> in the spot, whatever, this is your kth equation, whatever your k, k now is, and your a of k. 
coefficient, I'm going to call it, I called it L, I think, right? L that is corresponding to IJ. This is IJ. I'm going to have to move. Is minus four. Minus four. Yes, so we just need And this coefficient is now two. Instead of one. In any normal case, this would be one. It would be one. And now you're just saying, well, give me two of these. No, because I have been there and I So you're going to do A of K, and then you're going to, whatever corresponds to 2J here, is going to be 2. It wasn't very special. And then we all had the same. And I multiplied by this, so you don't have to take delta x squared. So how did you like the food left? So that's your. Yeah, that's what they're saying. I'll never send them there again. Yeah. Let's <laughs> And then you do it more up. Boundary. Let me just get up. Sorry, Mashi. <laughs>